G'day. This time of year I usually try and work my way through the job, the list of jobs that have uh, accumulated, the things I've promised myself I'll make or do uh, and haven't quite uh, gotten around to or have started but haven't finished and so uh, this year is no exception. However I got a call saying I'm looking for a Morse Taper 3 Arbor with a half inch BSW um, drawbar thread that I can use for some 22 bore cutters. Ah, those things aren't easy to find and so um, as I was doing some work on the lathe I thought ah oh, yeah I could probably do one of those without too many dramas and so I did. So here it is attached to a, a lump of steel. Uh, we'll have to work out what we're doing down here and threading and all that sort of thing. This is about using a uh, taper turning attachment to produce a taper, but uh, you could do the same thing with a cross slide, uh, sorry, a compound slide. Uh, the only thing you've got to watch there is that uh, you, you feed evenly. Uh, I've seen people make things with electric drills. I don't particularly like them myself, but um, I guess that's one option if you're trying to get a constant sort of feed. Uh, you just have to remember that you know the slower you go the better the finish is likely to be because you won't have uh, lots of you know tool marks. To set up my taper turning device there are several ways I could do it. It's got a graduated scale on it so I could dial something up. Uh, I could set it up with a bit of um, ground bar and then run my indicator along a particular length and look at the corresponding offset on the indicator. The way I usually do it though, if I've got a taper that matches, uh, is that I'll, I'll set the taper up, and in this case I've, this is a, a Morse 3, I've dialed it in here, I've then come along to the end and dialed it in, um, if it was out I gave it a, a, a gentle tap, came back this end, you know, rechecked it until I'm, I was confident the axis of the, of the conical surface here uh, coincided with the axis of a lathe. And that's that's the you know probably the easiest way to set things up. If you're worried about the, the, the goodness of the of the surface, just put some uh, some you can use blue. This is whiteboard pen that seems to work. Get a, a, a socket, slide that on and see how that goes. And you should see, I think I've I think I mark that when I pulled it off, but you should see a sort of a, a uniformish removal of blue. And if you're lucky, if, you, if you're using uh, engineer's blue, you may even see some build up inside the, the socket. I did have a, a drill I started doing this with, and then you may not be able to see that. There's a, there's a whole bunch of lines there, and running the indicator across those, it, it, it was twitching. So I think that they had a bit of a chatter problem, uh, didn't correct it. But, uh, you know, I thought, oh yes, nice, nice uh, clean shank, that, that should work nicely. No, it doesn't. Um, so you just have to be careful, uh, check these things out. This one's an older drill, but it seems to be a nice clean um, shank and fits the socket nicely. This is my taper turning attachment. They all work in a similar sort of fashion. Uh, there's a fixed portion which is anchored to the bed of the lathe. So this is just a, a tie rod here. And then there's a moving portion which is anchored to the cross slide. And by adjusting the taper here, or angle here, you, uh, when, the, when the lathe feeds, the, uh, the carriage here travels along the angled, um, what would you call it, slideway, and uh, produces your taper. Uh, this one's a, a, a nice one because it's got a, a little uh, worm gear drive here so it can be accurate, uh, adjusted in an accurate and, and very precise way. Uh, there's also a little scale up here which I keep covered. Um, this one also is good because if I disconnect this rod, I can use the lathe normally. So I can set this up for a particular taper disconnect this and then come back in a couple of weeks time and cut that same taper without having to worry about resetting it up which is really nice. Uh, some of the, 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 the add-on ones, the cheaper add-on ones in particular, it's a um, one of those things where you know once you've you set it up you've got to use it because as soon as you take it off to use the lathe normally you you know it's the, the adjustments gone so uh, nice way of doing things. Anyway, the next thing I have to do here is adjust the angle of this so that it matches the angle of my uh, taper. And I'll do that simply by putting the gauge on there and then winding that along, tweaking the, the, the knob here to get it all in adjustment. So here I am, I've got my uh, indicator set up against the taper. I've had a go at adjusting and I think I'm pretty right. And if you watch it, um, it 
it usually there's a there's a bit of a twitch at the start but once you get moving you can see that it's staying around about this the same spot there's a there's a slight cyclic um, error there which is probably the, the winding of the lead screw and uh, I might be able to get that a little bit better, but that's that's pretty good. Uh, and I usually find that um, ignoring that that bit on the front, if I can get that steady, uh, it's a good thing. This this tape of tanning attachment's worn. It relies on people putting oil on it, and uh, this one wasn't oiled terribly well, so there's wear in the middle, uh, and so it does tend to dip. But you know, it works um, pretty well. I'm pretty much set up to cut my taper here. I've taken this down to the major diameter of the taper. Um, most tapers when you, you know, whether they be Morse or, or um, machine tool, have got a small flat at the end. So it's, I think it's referred to as the gauge diameter. But basically, when cutting a taper like this, take your stock to that diameter and then cut up. Now I've got a, a scribed line there, a marked line on the texture, just to show me um, where the taper should be ending. So I've got about five millimeters between here and the shoulder, and that should be fine. I'm using my uh, favorite profiling tool here. I'd like to see how this goes on this particular steel. One thing before I forget, I've changed the tip of my indicator from a, from a, uh, a flat one, which is what I normally use, uh, that one I think it is, to a pointed one. Uh, and the reason for that is that with a flat tip, if you're running that on a taper, what it can actually do is tend to unscrew the indicator tip, uh, which then, of course, gives you all sorts of strife and inaccuracy. So just something to, to, to bear in mind. If you're indicating off a taper, uh, you probably want to go for a pointed tip. If you're indicating on a round surface, you probably want a flat tip. Uh, if you're indicating on a square surface, uh, whatever. You, you can indicate on a round surface with a... Um, with a pointed tip, it just means you've got to be bang on centre line to, to, to know what it is that you're actually measuring. I've got most of my taper done. You can see it's it's developing. It's stopping around about there somewhere. Uh, so I'll soon I'll soon see when it gets into the black section there. Um, there's the socket which I'm using as a as a test fit, and that's a nice fit. That's I can't feel any shake in that at all. So this this taper is well to match this socket is a, is a Morse three as far as I'm concerned. So that's actually good. Um, this is the time to test it because you've got enough taper there to actually feel but you've still got a little bit of room left to connect if you're way way out then you'd be in trouble but as it is uh, i'm good now one of the nice things about this tip uh, is that it cuts in both directions and so well, I'm, not, I'm now going to actually use that to my advantage here i'm going to cut back here just to uh, to see how that what the finish is like on this um, second probably second, third to last pass, uh, but if it's if it's good, uh, then I think of what I'll be doing is cutting away from the headstock there, um, and that way I can work right to that line and be and be confident that, uh, you know, I'm not going to overshoot. Other than that, uh, earlier on, I had some black texture in the middle here, and I, I, mach I uh, put the taper on, or machined up, to that until it ran out, measured that, did it again after feeding in five thou, and I got two and a half mil worth of movement. And so you can do it that way too. You can work out, well, I need to come in, you know, 10 mil, which means I need to feed in, da 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 da, work out your maths that way. But um, there we go, it's, it's coming along nicely. The uh, taper turning part of this is all done, and um, has worked out quite nicely. It's, there's there's probably oh maybe two to three millimeters of clearance between the end of the socket and um, the end of the, the taper and there's the sort of the five millimeters or so I was aiming for down here so I'm happy with that. The last thing that needs to be done to this end is putting in the thread for the drawbar. Now this is going to be a half inch um, BSW drawbar, so that's all fine. I've got the I've got a, a, a tap for that and I'll be be doing that, but. With, it, with threads that uh, are going to be on and off uh, and could get damaged, um, what, what you usually do is you put a bit of a counterbore. So I'm going to use a, a, a diameter 13 drill uh, and just go in for 
a millimeter or two, tenth of an inch, something like that, um, and just give that some clearance before I then go in and, and, and tap that, uh, that hole out. So here it is, the finished uh, MT3 with a half inch um, BSW drawbar thread in it. Uh, that's already just, that this is this is concentric with all this, so this can be uh, chucked up and locked off to length and turned down to size and whatever's required out of this. Um, but I guess the the two things are that these things aren't as hard as they uh, can first appear. Um, but the other one is if you see a lathe with a taper turning attachment on it, uh, they're, they're well worth considering uh, if you do this sort of stuff. If you're just doing straight cylindrical turning, uh, I wouldn't bother, but if, you, if you're after a lathe that can do all sorts of bits and pieces, uh, that's certainly a, uh, a feature which is, is worth keeping an eye out for. So thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you for the next one.